we're gonna go herping today and let's see what we're gonna turn up. Actually, I've totally forgotten how much cover was at this site. I usually just come here to get the frogs. I haven't been on this flip site for probably close to two years. Um, and I really should visit it more often. There's so much good cover here. So just been scratching through these little mole heaps. You can see it's quite wet, but we just got a, <laughs> we almost lost it, but we got a Scalotis bunkie. It's the, so I think it's a silvery dwarf burrowing skink. Um, okay, you can't see here, but they have a little tiny little feet just with two tiny little toes. I think we'll give you a better look at it once he stops wriggling. But we're going to get some photos of this guy and then just pop him back in his little mouth. So usually they will disappear as soon as you put them back, but this guy's being... Oh, there you go. No. Come on. Oh, we'll just cover him up and so he doesn't get eaten by someone or something. So being out at the spot a couple minutes, I haven't really seen much, um, apart from a little a couple of frogs. But I'm going to head over to my sort of frogging site in a couple of minutes. I just wanted to check out some of these concrete boards and pieces that I found. Oh, there you go. Our first snake of the day. That is a newborn mole snake. Um, we have seen quite a lot of these on the videos in the past. So nothing all that special, but nice to get a snake on the board relatively early. Shame this guy's absolutely freezing. There you can see a nice little juvenile mole snake, Pseudoaspis carna. It's actually the second largest non venomous snake in the country, um, only smaller than the Southern African python, which absolutely dwarfs the mole snakes, which only reach about two meters or so. I'm gonna grab a couple of photographs of this dude and just pop him back under his piece of concrete. You guys better look at him. So here's just a better look at that little mole snake. Um, shame, the guy's really cold, so he's not actually moving all that much. So I thought I'd pop him in the sun. Give us a better look at him. But obviously as these guys grow, they lose all these juvenile markings. And the ones in this area go pretty much a, a bronzy, sort of coppery brown. Whereas the ones we've seen previously on the west coast go pretty much pitch black. But yeah, like I showed you, you can just see in reference to my hand. This guy's really small. So we're not going to bother this guy too much more. I'm just going to pop him back under his piece of concrete and let's keep on herping. So I just bent down to flip this rock and there's nothing in it. But as I was putting the rock back, have a go at that. There's a little angular tortoise just basking at the base of this bush. Now angular tortoises are pretty much the most common species we get here. Well, they are the only species we really get here on the Cape Peninsula, other than the Parrot Peak Puddler, but, um, which aren't nearly as common. So I nice see this little guy just uh, grabbing, grabbing a little bit of sun here. It's still relatively cold. It's probably just 22 degrees Celsius. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but it's going to warm up sufficiently to get out of his nighttime retreat. So we actually got into a good section of rocky cover to flip here, so giving this a red hot crack. Um, it's not too far from where you just got that. Oh well. Have a look at it. It's actually a little bit better in the shade. Have a look at that. That is a herald snake, which are quite common throughout most of the country. We just don't see a lot of them here in the sort of Cape Peninsula. So super chuffed to get hands on this guy. You can see they've got these little white speckles and a dark temple pretty much on the side of the head there. Um, other parts of the country, like you guys would have seen in my other videos, they have red to orange lips. Whereas you can see this guy's got a very pale, almost white to off yellow color on the upper lip there. Um, super chuffed to 
connect with these guys. This is a species that I haven't seen at this particular spot before. Although I see a lot of frogs here, a lot of cacos, which is the main sort of reason why I'm at the site. So I'll probably bump into those later. But these guys are definitely um, predator of the flat caco that we're going to bump into a bit later. So yeah, pretty tough to see this guy. I'm We're just done photographing this herald. I'm just gonna pop him back under his little piece of concrete here. Off he goes. Later, brother. Apologies for the wind noise, but we just got our third snake and our third species of the day. This is a common sight to everyone on the channel. This is a young spotted grass snake, some phylax rhombiatus. We have fanged we have fanged snake that is can give you a bit of a bite, especially if they sink those rear fangs in there. Um, I've had one negative experience with quite a severe bite, but nothing, nothing to send you to the hospital or, or anything like that. But yeah, certainly the big ones, you don't want to let them sort of latch onto you and get those fangs in. But like I said, common sight to everyone on the channel, spot a grass snake. Let's go. So I thought I'd give you a comparison here between the spotted grass snake, the dark snake with the dark spots, and a juvenile mole snake that has these really light colored spots which fade with age. And as you can see, they are quite different. And I, I personally think quite difficult to sort of confuse, but many people have difficulty telling them apart. And there you go. Mole snake is a much shorter, stockier snake with quite a short pointed head. Whereas our spotted grass snake has the dark markings on the nape there. Um, more of a bullet shaped head. Um, both of them equally have these bright red eyes, which can be easily mistaken. But once you have a look at the dorsal patterns there, how uh, the spotted grass snake has got these large, dark, almost paired spots. Whereas the mole snake's got very light single spots on either side of the body. Um, this is the spotted grass snake and a juvenile mole snake. Both these snakes are just getting ready to get released. I just turned up another little angular tortoise. This one's at least out and about on the move. But there's some pretty nice boards here, right? Well, piece of concrete right next to it. Hey, watch out, friend. Um, so you may as well get a little flip. I'm probably going to grab some stills of this little tortoise in a little bit. So let's have a go. Whoa! There you go. We've got a neonate puffetter. This is Vitus orientalis. I'm just gonna grab this tortoise because I wanna grab some photographs quick. <coughs> just grab this. Have a look at that. That is a neonate puffetter. One of the more dangerous snakes you have in the Cape Peninsula. And you can see this guy's just tucked up right under this piece of concrete, just taking it really easy but we are going to whip him out and grab a couple of pictures. A little bit of video just because I know everyone really loves puff headers and I'm a big puff header fan too. So let's just get the tweezies out and we'll have a look at him. So we've got the ever present tweezies. Um, just going to lift this puff header out really gently. It's super cold, but these guys are a little bit like landmines. They can be a little bit unpredictable. I'll just pop them up here. Oh, we can have a little look at him. These juvenile ones tend to have these sort of more browny colors and as they develop and grow, they will get bright, nice yellow colors. But I'm just going to move it out into the open and we can have a better look at it in a couple of seconds. First amphibian find of the day. This is just a Cape stream frog, another common occurrence on all of these Western Cape videos. He's just under this rock, so we're just going to grab a quick archer and just let him be.
Let's take some screen for them. Let's try and get out of this crowd. A surprise in his little burrow. This is an olive snake, and we haven't seen one of these for a couple of weeks on the videos. This is Lyco Lycochondrodomorphus inornatus, the olive snake. It used to be called the olive house snake, but that name has since changed, and now they are recognized as members of the water snake family, which makes a heck of a lot more sense. These guys are absolutely beautiful down here in the Cape. Not in a super abundant species around the rest of the country, but down here, this is not an unexpected find. I just haven't seen one for a while. And this is now our fourth species of snake for the day, so we're doing pretty well. If we can turn up a puff adder maybe, or a reed snake, or even a spotted harlequin snake, they were doing really well. Yeah, a nice little olive snake really pretty one we're just gonna let this guy go after a couple of photos just back under his concrete as usual we just finish up with this olive snake and he or she can now go back under her concrete Oh, we got something. This is just a neonate brown water snake. Same family as that olive snake we got a couple of minutes ago. Come on, friend. Yeah, this is like a Hemidomorphus ruthless, the brown water snake, or the common brown water snake. This one is absolutely minute. I'll give you a little view, but they generally quiet. Zooty, they don't stick around too much. There we go, we have another species for the day. This is the common slug eater. Another regular visitor to the channel. Um, these guys are super, super, super common. Now this is really interesting. Uh, these slug eaters have a really unique defensive mechanism, which is seen in a couple of other species in southern Africa, but when really accosted and when they obviously feel unsafe, they turn into these tight spirals. Um, you can see he's actually got his head way in the middle of the coils here, so any predators that want to come along and eat him, it's actually almost impossible because he's so tightly coiled up there. I mean, he's got his head wrapped there and he's obviously will start musking, um, which as I mentioned, smells absolutely dreadful. So it's such a unique adaptation that allows these animals to evade predation, um, particularly by things like birds that will typically go for the go for the head where you can see the head is tightly wrapped in that coil. Um, I'm going to grab a couple of photographs of this really quickly because it's not something I see really often and they don't often do it, um, or you don't often see them doing it should I say. So let me grab a couple of photographs and hopefully he doesn't unravel before I get my camera gear set up but the snake is remaining absolutely dead still and, and is not interested in, at all in moving so Slagida and its defensive pose seems to have won this war because we're not going to get any decent footage out of this guy so that was a super little productive bit of scratching around and a little bit of flipping but now we're going to head towards my little frog site and scratch around for some frogs and hopefully we'll turn a couple of flat cackles up doesn't everyone just love a bunch of old clothes trash flipping and this is getting a bit gross but we always try to like to flip a bit of trash but no luck today. 
Okay, so I've just moved locations and of course you know what time it is. I'm just using my little handrake and we're gonna mo be moving through some of these restios. Um, just trying to see if we can turn up some flat cacos. Oh, got our first one already. I don't know if you can see it. I think it's just off camera. Um, it's just battling with light here a bit. But have a look at that. That is our first flat caco. I heard them calling. So I decided to sort of head to this little spot. And there we go, first flat caco of the day. This is caco sternum platase. I'm just gonna pop it in this little vial. Um, try to give you guys a better look so I don't have to sort of yank onto it the whole time. There you go, I am going to see if I can't turn any more up. I mean, I did hear, hear that one. Oh, just going on. Oh, we got another one. Wow, this one has a really nice dorsal stripe. Whoops, I'm not on the frame. Um, but have a go at that. Flat caco, caco sin platase. I'm just gonna pop it in the vial here with this other one. And then I'm just gonna have a quick scratch to see if we can't turn up any more. Uh, and then I can get photographing. I don't need to photograph too many. Um, they do look very similar. So I'm just moving through all these dead burnt rest here, sort of grass clumps here. So these tools are like really multifunctional. I mean, we use them to catch the fossorial lizards in the sand and they work really well for scratching through here, just in places you don't particularly want to put your hands, um, whether it's in fear of glass, wire, or just you know, like we saw earlier. I mean, there's a lot of puff headers in this area, so we want to avoid that. But yeah, that's great. I'm pretty much going to just photograph these cacos really quick and we're going to head on to the next spot. We'll try to give you a little bit of a POV of what it looks like sort of scratching around. You can see just very lightly just moving some of these restos. We're not like ripping into the soil or anything like that. So it's not a very intrusive method. Um, we're merely just moving clumps of the dried and burnt grass. There was a quite a severe fire that moved through here a couple of months ago. So loads of this vegetation has just burnt. You can see once we actually start moving the surface layer away, you can see you get quite a lot of moist, moist soil. And yeah, that's essentially where these frogs are sitting. They're just sitting in between the moist soil and the dry grass on the, on the surface. So yeah, doesn't look like we're gonna get lucky. I'm not gonna carry on for this too long because it's not very interesting to watch. But yeah, just that's how we find the cacos. Yeah, you can actually get an idea of what they actually look like rather than just a brown little blob on the sand there. Flat caco, caco sternum platees. So just finished up with those cacos. I'm just walking back to another spot. Look at this big old angular tortoise. Just nestled under the bushes here. It looks like quite a nice big male. So I'm just gonna pick him out quick, have a good look at him, get a picture or two, and then he can go back into his bush. Wow, this guy's an absolute beast. Have a look at that. He's huge. So I'm just gonna put him on this little sandy patch with my camera and snap a quick photo. Awesome. It's like third angular tortoise of the day. Whoa, one, two. We got a double flip. I don't know how much that you caught. That was terribly filming. Terribly filmed, I'm sorry. But we just got two brown water snakes under the same little piece of concrete. These guys are going absolutely ballistic. I'm just gonna pop this piece of concrete down and just let them go. We're about out of battery and about to head home, so nice. So I totally ran out of battery on my phone to record, but had a pretty successful day out. I mean, we got a bunch of different species, and nice range of snakes as well. Tortoises, obviously, we smashed that. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to check out a bunch of other ones on my channel. We've got way more up and coming and I will catch you on the next one.